Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of Hurting Distance by Sophie Hanna. So Sophie Hanna I first came across because she's the authorised representative to continue writing new Agatha Christie stories. And uh, as always I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Three years ago something terrible happened to Naomi Jenkins. So terrible she never told anyone. Now Naomi has another secret. Her lover, unhappily married Robert Hayworth. When Robert vanishes, Naomi knows he must have come to harm, but the police are less convinced, particularly when Robert's wife insists he is not missing. Naomi is desperate. If she can't persuade the police that Robert is in danger, she'll convince them that he is a danger to others. Then they'll have to look for him, urgently. Naomi knows how to describe in detail the actions of a psychopath. All she needs to do is dig up her own traumatic past. And right off the bat, I will say, there are a trigger warnings galore in this for sexual assault and rape. It's not really one of those crime novels where there's a high body count there's just a high rape count and it starts with this kind of anonymous letter to a rape survivors website and they wrote when i first logged onto your site i hoped that something i read there would make me feel better but the opposite has happened why do so many of your correspondents use the same cloying vocabulary thriving telling and healing smiling through tears rising from the ashes etc it reminds me of the lyrics of a bad heavy metal album nobody says that they do not ever expect to get over what happened to them and um, so our main character's friend, Yvonne, says, I'm the proud owner of the shortest marriage on record, and I'm extremely precocious when it comes to ballsing up my life. I got divorced while most of my friends were taking their A-levels. I smile at the exaggeration. Yvonne is obsessed with the fact that she is divorced at 33. She thinks there's a stigma attached to having a failed marriage behind you at such a young age. I once asked her what was an okay age to get divorced, and she said 46, without a moment's hesitation. I'm 33, fun fact. So someone talks about going camping, and we get camping. This from the woman who wouldn't go to Glastonbury because the toilet paper isn't folded into a point by a maid. Been to Glastonbury, it's good. And they say at least camping's meant to be shit. You go there expecting to sleep on some mud, under some cloth and eat packets of dried food. Let me get this line. I'm sure you dissolve like the Wicked Witch of the West from The Wizard of Oz if you ever tried to go camping. And I just thought that was fun because I've been reading The Wizard of Oz books as a buddy read with uh, Joel Swagman. So here's where the title comes from. So somebody goes, um... You don't know him and he doesn't know you, therefore he can't hurt you. It's the people we're closest to who can hurt us the most. Believe me, I know. The people you love are within hurting distance, close range. Strangers aren't. And then we get, thinking of my own experience, I said vehemently, you're telling me a stranger can't hurt me. If the pain isn't personal, it isn't as bad. It's not about you or the other person or the relationship between the two of you. It's more like a natural disaster, an earthquake or a flood. If I was drowning in a flood, I'd call it bad luck, but it wouldn't be a betrayal. Chance and circumstance have no free will. They can't betray you. And I like this as well. I wonder what you would say about strangers who are kind, who smile at me in the street and say, sorry, love, when they bump into me by accident. To anyone who's experienced deliberate brutality, the slightest kind word comes as a shock forever after. I'm so pathetically grateful, even for the small, meaningless kindnesses that cost people nothing, grovelingly thankful that someone thought me worth a smile or a sorry. I think it's the shock of the contrast. I'm amazed that offhand generosity and offhand evil can exist in the same world and barely be aware of one another. And we get a reference to the boys in blue as the name for the police um, and that is the name or the working title of Lightfold book number four and then we get a reference to Rebecca so we get doesn't she know what a cliche she is the stereotypical evil servant like Mrs Danvers in Rebecca have you seen it read it oh very posh gov we get this I know the police are allowed to let people smoke I've seen it on television and there's an ashtray on the table in front of me if tobacco and nicotine are permissible why not alcohol and that makes me wonder like when this was set um, it's set in 2006 actually and I believe the smoking ban came in, it was 2007. We get a use of the word spastic from one of the police officers, which is obviously very politically incorrect and very insensitive. We also get a reference to Shackleton as well, which just made me think of uh, Kaz from Cats and Camera. And we also get this, so a sign to the right of the bar warned customers that from Monday the 17th of April, the entire pub would be a smoke-free zone. Um, which again, I think it just helps to kind of ground this in the time period it was set. And I like the, these couple of paragraphs, I want to read these out. Um, so the main character spends a lot of the time, it's kind of like the unreliable narrator thing, but she spends a lot of time talking to Robert, the, the man she was having this affair with. You've never met my parents. They don't even know about you. I thought I was protecting myself from their criticism and disapproval, but it turns out that they are the protected ones. It's an odd thought that the large majority of people in the world, mum and dad, my customers, shoppers I pass on the street, have not had their lives devastated by you. They don't know you and never will. And it's the same the other way round. 
The waiter who was looking after me and Yvonne tonight, a little too attentively, he hovers too close to our table, his posture stiff and formal, one arm behind his back, surging forward to replenish our wine glasses each time one of us takes a sip. He has probably had his life shattered, at one time or another, by somebody whose name would mean nothing to me. Only in a very minor, trivial sense do we inhabit the same world as others. So someone makes uh, a reference saying, uh, while well, the main character says, uh, I might have to throw myself under a train if you don't come to my rescue. And I just thought that was rough because I have a friend who did actually commit suicide by jumping beneath the train. So, yeah, any references like that kind of get me, you know. And Steph says, I'm not a man. I can't rape anybody, can I? Um, but women have been committed of, of rape. I had this conversation with a friend because she said women can't rape people. So it's just sexual assault when women rape people, apparently, because equality, I guess. Uh, and then we get this, um, where Olivia says, uh, any man I meet, any man I start a relationship with that's even vaguely serious, I've got to break the bad news, which is that she can't have children. Imagine dropping that bombshell on a first date. You have no idea how many blokes I never see again after I tell them. It really hurts, but I keep the pain to myself because I'm a stoic and I believe in stiff upper lips. I don't, is that a thing? I don't know, I, I think most of my friends don't want kids, so it's almost a positive thing. Like I had an ex-girlfriend who couldn't have kids and she, she was kind of similar, she was like, I'm really sorry I can't have kids, and I was like, I'm fine with that. But anyway, Hurting Distance by Sophie Hanna. As I say, it's got trigger warnings for pretty much everything, but it's a pretty competently written thriller. Um, it's not the best, it's, I, I guess it's like a pretty average really actually for a thriller. The writing's quite good, the plot maybe not so much, and lots of sexual assaults and stuff, but there's also lots of twists and turns. Overall, Hurting Distance by Sophie Hanna, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5, it was okay. So there we have it, that's what I made of Hurting Distance by Sophie Hanna. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.